Hello again, guys and gals. It's old John here, and uh, I'm going to demonstrate something uh, that there's been a lot of questions asked lately about um, grooming a deer and how to get a, a deer to look, the hair on a deer to look full. Now, I'm not talking uh, like a, an animal that's being fluffed up against, against the wind, against the winter's cold, but well, you don't want to have it to where it's slicked down. You want to give it a little, a little lift, a little life in its, in its coat. Now, this is my own personal deer here. Finally got him remounted after way too many years. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate on this little guy here how I go about fluffing the coat just to give, it, to give the hair some lift. I'm also going to demonstrate what I do to uh, stand the feeler hairs over the eyes and under the eyes, how I stand them on end. Um, I hope you get something out of it. I hope you learned. This is a, these are some old methods of mine I've used for years, and I um, hope you enjoy. So let's get to it. Okay, I'm just going to review what I've done so far. Um, the day after he was mounted, um, he was bagged entirely, head to back. And the second day when I unbagged him, I went over his coat with this soft wire brush. This is a wire brush that you can use for brushing kitty cats. So it's, it's very, very soft, very soft. I went against the hair, brushed it back down lightly. Okay. This really, really gets down to the roots and lifts the hair. And that's why this brush is a must for the first day. The second and third day, now this deer has been mounted going on his third or fourth day. Um, when the skin firms up a little bit but, and, and the hair is not completely dry, what I like to do is go over them like so. I like to, well first thing I'm going to do is take three of these clips off the ear that are nearest to where the brush is going to make contact with the upper side of the neck. Um, I like to use this small brass bristle brush and this wider brass bristle brush. Say that three times fast, brass bristle brush. And I like to go ahead and use these in a, a quick motion on the, on the hair. And what I do is I'll hold, hold the deer steady, otherwise it, it'll just rock all over the place. And I'll come in and I'll come up and I'll like so, lightly lift the hair. Now rather than brush it back down, you know, lifting it like so, even up the side, side of the face, around the back of the neck, down to the shoulders, okay? Then what I do after the hair's been lifted, I go over and lightly, lightly run my hand down the deer, it's almost as if I'm petting it very gently. Pretend it's a live deer, okay? Now I will continue this, like I say, back along down the back of the neck to the shoulders. I'll simply, I'll continually, it's just a real light back brushing that I do. Okay. And then I go over, I lightly, gently lay the hairs back down by hand. Don't brush them. The other thing you want to watch when you're grooming your, your deer mounts, don't groom the hair back from the head to the shoulders. The hair grows down on the neck, all right? Study photos of live deer, videos of live deer, and you'll discover how the hair grows. It grows in a particular direction. Same thing with a horse or any animal that, that you would groom by hand. You do the same thing with them. And on this side, too, I'll show the same thing. Well, first, I must remove these clips. Now these clips up along the bottom edge of the ear are just close to where the neck is and they need, they need to come off for now. But we're also going to brush this side of the deer the same way. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to come up. Now you just watch this carefully. Zoom in a little bit and I'll show you what I'm doing. Oops. Here we are. Okay. Focus on that. Alrighty, and we're good to go now. Now, again, 
you start by you make sure that you're brushing downward and toward the center of the deer's neck. Okay, that's that's the first thing. Now to get that to get that lift in the hair, I simply go back and do this. It's not so much back brushing as I'm simply sort of looping my hand like so against the hair. Okay? I can even use the brush backwards and lift like so and like so. And then again, I come down over it lightly. And what, what you'll discover is, well, first of all, you, you need a well-tanned hide. Now this, this hide was tanned with Lutan F, a very, very good tanning system. Produces an excellent tan with excellent stretch, excellent characteristics to the hair. Let's go a little further up the face here to the earbuds. Again, you can fluff the earbuds the hair on the earbuds. You simply back brush the hair, okay, come up and up, and then go down. Gently kind of groom it back with your hand, just a bit. You can do the face as well. Come up, behind the eyes, over the tops of the eyes, along the bottom of the eyes. This puts life into your mount, but otherwise would make it look flat without it. Now let's see if we can get an angle to show that the hair rise on the face. Right. Now I will go ahead now with the wide breast bristle brush and go up like so. I'm going up and forward against the growth. Like I say, this deer is really drying up nicely, so he's already starting to set up. And this will become permanent in him. I want him to look not necessarily like he's fluffed up against the cold, but just that he's not a deadhead, that it doesn't look flat. Okay? And you can also find feeler hairs when you do this. You can lift up, there are fewer hairs on the side of the face. You will find them. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in on these feeler hairs. Here you've got some feeler hairs on the side of the face. You will see these on your own pet dog, pet cat. If you own livestock, horses and whatnot, you'll find these feeler hairs on the sides of the face of your animals. Any animal, any mammal, I should say. Now, from here, I'm going to back off and continue grooming. We're not really back brushing as much as lifting, lifting the hair, lifting as I go. I want to keep it neat. I don't want it to look ratty. I want it to be neat. And I get in and I lightly pet the hair back down. Now this gives you a fluffier deer. Like I say, if I was trying to represent a deer, trying to stay cold against the, uh, trying to stay warm against the cold, or an angry mount, an angry mounted deer, he would definitely, definitely, definitely have his hackles raised. And that is some severe back brushing that's done on day one after the deer is finished, after the mounting is finished. I'm just pressing in the facial details. I carved them in pretty well into this form because I knew I was going to be using a deep winter coat. There we go. Details in place. Let's make sure we're pressing them down. They need to be pressed down every day. Every day. And then after you press them down, you go back with the brush and we raise it back up again. We're just raising the hair and gently, gently, gently smoothing it back down. The next thing I want to show is how to get these feeler hairs or vibrace over and below the eyes to stand on end. Okay, feeler hairs on a deer. Now, you may want to do this for every client deer. I try to. Uh, this is my own personal deer. This is not a competition mount. 
I'm no longer competing, although I would consider this one good enough to put into a competition. I come in, I, I'm using a, a, um, a metal probing tool. This is, I believe, this is a Kemper tool. What I like to do is I like to go in at the root of the hair, the feeler hair, poke in a little bit, and draw it forward, like so. Grab the feeler hair. See, I'm going to do this on camera here. Get in down at the root, draw it for, draw the whole thing forward. Sorry about that. I do use my hands in my work. Right here we have another one. We can dig in behind it at the root. You see that? You see how it's tilting, being tilted forward, and go in at the root and bring it forward. So now these are all standing up nicely. Maybe not symmetrically, but that's okay because I don't think you see them symmetrically on very many live deer. But at least they're up, they're elevated. And you have the same thing with the lower feeler has below the eye. You grab hold of one, bring it forward with your fingers, get in down at the root, and bend the root forward. All size feeler hairs do the same thing. You don't want to try and pull it. You don't want to pull so hard that you pull them out. If you do, you need to take your tool, make a hole, get a little drop of CA glue, pop it in the hole, and reinsert the feeler hair back into the hole. Well, this is done over both eyes. As with the other one, pick one that you want to bring up or forward, grab hold of the the hair, get in down at the root, behind it, bring it forward. Uh, it's up here, okay. Then bring it forward. All right, just like that. And the hairs stand up. You've also got hairs on the side of the muzzle. I say besides feeler hairs on the side of the face. They're all around. They're all over the animal. And the more you can get them raised, the more lifelike your deer is going to look. So there you have it. We've got a deer that's groomed to look fluffy. You've got his feeler hairs over and under his eyes, all standing upright, as upright as you can get them. And you, you've given yourself more realism to your deer mount. Like I say, I, you may not need to do this on every commercial deer. It may be impractical to do this on every commercial deer. Uh, competition deer, demand it. Um, I do happen to do this for all of my client deer. I do get in there and fluff the coat as best I can, especially if it's a... If it's a um, a late season winter coat, I like to get in there and I like to create the most lifelike um, mount that I possibly can for my clients, myself. Um, it's a little extra work, but you do it on those three to four days right after the mount is completed, is, is put together. That three to four day window where you're working on babysitting, you know, you're making sure the ears have not drummed, that they're not drumming. Uh, it's just a little extra grooming now and again here and there. And it, it just gives a little more life to an otherwise lifeless specimen. Um, so, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, like I say, this is something I've been doing whew, for a long, 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 long time. Decades. Um... It's something that I don't normally mention in my videos for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe I'm high. Maybe I'm drunk. No. Uh, uh, it's just, it's something that um, I've gotten asked questions of, of late. Um, how do you create, uh, you know, uh, the look that your deer is not, not, that the hair is not just pressed down tight? How do you avoid that? 
Well, this is, this is how I avoid that, by taking a little extra time and working the hide on the, on the form, working the deer, working the hair, just working on it. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to work on these things. And this little guy here is extra special. Like I say, this is my own personal deer. Um, this is his fourth incarnation, the fourth mount that I've done of him. Uh, the first one I mount when I mounted him, I don't even think I had brains enough to soak the, the cape. I did have smarts enough to get to get the skin tanned. I'll go there. I got the skin tanned. Um, a local taxidermist tanned it for me, but I didn't have the uh, savvy, the experience, the knowledge to know that I needed to at least sponge the inside of the skin to get it to stretch. What I recall about mounting my first deer, my own deer, was that stitches popped left and right, and I'm thinking, how in the world do you get these things sewn closed? And it was because the skin was being closed dry. It was a dry tan skin, and that's why I couldn't get the ears to relax. Uh, <laughs> I really messed up on my first mount. But then I remounted him a second time, and I wasn't really pleased with the head form. It was nice, but it wasn't really right for whatever reason. The third time I mounted him was on a beautiful head form. It was, it was a buckeye head form. It was a, a, hard right, a hard left turn, so it was a hard left turn. Um, of course, hanging on the wall, the deer was looking off to the left. But then I had, I had a commercial building and I had a, a, a fish tank with a bass in it and the, uh, the, the filter pump shorted out and there was a small fire. And the flames did come up and scorched the brisket hairs on my deer as well as covered him with a thick black soot. I did manage to get him clean, but I could not really remove the smell from it. And I thought, he's ruined. He's ruined, and I was real happy with the mount, but I took it apart, and when I took it apart, because it was the third time taking them apart, the skull plate had busted apart. Now, the skull plate had turned black over the years because it was only rubbed with a dry preservative, Calorax, a product of J.W. Elwood Supply Company from Northwestern School of Taxidermy. Um, so whoever says you don't need to boil the skull plate is an idiot. And they're giving you incorrect information, fake information, false information. Skull plates need to be boiled. Otherwise, they will deteriorate, as, this, as mine did. So I bought a uh, reproduction skull plate from Matuska Supply. And I secured the antlers to the skull plate. Um, I was going to use a Joe Combs wall pedestal in a sharp left turn like this. And then research came out with a floor pedestal version. So here he is. The other thing I did was I molded his antlers and made four castings. Why? One, because I could. Two, originally I wanted a mount my full my deer as a full mount without any experience i was 18 i wanted to mount my my first deer as a full mount but luckily or unluckily my uncle had cut it up <laughs> did me a favor cut the legs off caped it out the whole nine yards uh, at least uh, skinned the body and whatnot removed the genitals for me and all and um I've been able to recently purchased a life-size cape, same size, a life-size form from research, same size, and I'll be doing a life-size version of my deer that I wanted to do from the start. So I've got this beautiful pedestal. Uh, he's not a big deer, but he's mine. He's my buck. As he said in Rudolph, my little buck. So I thank you for watching. And listening to my reminis reminiscences, reminiscences, reminiscings, listening to me yak. Um, until the next time, adios amigos, take care, be well, stay safe.
We'll see you again.